Well, today, Ontario reported their lowest number of cases in over a month while conducting a record high amount of testing. Michelle Hope joins me now. She's the CEO of the Medical Laboratory Professionals Association of Ontario. Michelle, great to have you back on the program. Testing is something we've been talking about over and over again. Ontario, one of those provinces that have been saying that we need to increase our testing, are they meeting their targets? They are definitely meeting their targets. We've seen a tremendous increase in the past seven days. Um, testing has gone up and down a little bit, but mm -hmm. getting to 19,500 is actually quite tremendous for us. The reports are saying that the positivity rate is dropping. So explain to us what exactly that means, as of course we're increasing the, the amount of testing that's being done, but in terms of the number of positive cases. So what that means is the government tracks cases every day, so the number of positive tests that come in. So the number of positive tests that have arrived every day is actually going down. So we've seen a downward trend. Mm -hmm. I think in the last seven days, there's only been two days with a slight dip of sort of increase, mm -hmm. but the rest of those days have been a steady decline. So people are listening to what the government is telling us to do. Now, with all of this, testing, of course, requires the proper staff and facilities in order to do that. Um, how is all of that playing out? Um, we are in a bit of a precarious position right now in Ontario. Um, uh, with the announcement that Justin actually made um, in regards to uh, money going out to actually help our frontline workers. Uh, the way it's been managed in Ontario has actually put us in a really tough position. We've got our lab professionals right now that haven't been included in that pay. Mm. Um, and what that's done, it's actually affected morale in the lab. Um, we started the pandemic understaffed mm -hmm. and we've, we've asked this group to hit these numbers and they've been hitting them. And now they've just discovered that the um, the wage increase that's uh, been um, selected for a group of people in Ontario doesn't include them. So it's it's been a little hard to swallow right now. Well, certainly, and I guess the question being is, is that they these individuals, for the work that they're doing, would be considered to be essential workers, would they not? Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because this has been a dialogue that we've had the last 14 days with the government, but mm -hmm. I really believe the government has missed the mark here. Um, there is a variety of different models right now in the United States that they are looking at to look at hazard pay to ensure that we include those workers that are risking their life. Um, here in Canada, we've dealt with it a little differently. So from the federal government, they kind of said, provincially, you decide. Mm -hmm. And what's happened here in the province is the province has um, selected three qualifiers, but now they seem to have hand-selected groups and they've left groups out. And one of those groups are lab professionals. And it is, it, it's a little hard to understand right now when this is the group that's working to get us these results. What's, and you said that you've been in talks with the government for, for the last couple of weeks. What's the response been? The response has been right now that there are three qualifiers and they're sticking to those qualifiers. What's unfortunate is there are some groups that actually are outside of those qualifiers. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of confusion right now. Um, so what we are trying to do is work collaboratively with them, collaboratively with them to help them understand this is a group we really cannot forget. For example, does it make sense to go onto an ER floor and have a lab assistant draw blood from a COVID-19 patient and stand right next to another professional mm -hmm. who is working with the patient and they're getting the pandemic pay and the lab professional isn't. Mm. It doesn't make sense right now. No, and, and I certainly agree with you on that. And I think it's a discussion we need to continue to have. With that now happening and you guys having to grapple with that, you're also having to deal with, we need to still keep the testing going. We need to keep doing this. and. And like we're hearing from all the health professionals, we're just in this first wave uh, in terms of reopening. We're only in a first phase, not everywhere across the country, but in some places. So where do things go from here? Because there is a, a definite automatic reliability on the work that, uh, that these uh, lab researchers are doing, that the testers are doing in order to maintain and, and provide the data so we can see where the numbers are and, and continue to put in measures to keep the spread from ri rising. I think that um, we as Ontarians need to keep faith that we've got lab professionals that will show up every day and do their job. Um, some, they're also dealing with some of the challenges with reagents, which is really uh, an issue with getting product into the lab, but mm -hmm. they get up every day, they're working 24 seven, they are short staffed, they have delayed retirement, they're working way above expectations and 
as we can see with the numbers, they are knocking it out of the park right now. 19,500 yeah. tests yesterday is incredible for us to get to. And they are, as you say, they're putting their lives on the line to help save so many others. Michelle Hode, CEO of the Medical Laboratory Professionals Association of Ontario. Appreciate the conversation, Michelle. We'll continue it. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Angie. You're welcome.